What's up, everybody? So you're thinking about moving to the Oregon coast. Well, we are here, and we're here to answer all your questions about moving to the Oregon coast. We're going to talk about everything from population. We're going to talk about weather. We're going to talk about tourism. We're going to talk about everything that you might want to know and possibly more. And we're going to get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living on the Oregon coast, eating, sleeping, working, playing, then make sure to subscribe below, hit the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about what's new on the Oregon coast. My name is Eddie and I get emails, calls, texts every single day from people just like you looking to make a move to the coast. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give me a call, shoot me a text, leave me an email and I'll be sure to get back to you so you can make a smooth move to the Oregon coast and we're going to get after it. Some of the things that you're going to want to know about the coast is first of all, geography, where things are, where you want to be. There's a number of different cities along the coast and we're just going to start from the north and go down to the south. There's three basic regions in the Oregon coast. There's the north, central and southern Oregon coast and they're split roughly by geography. I think the coast would go on continuously and people would just have a non-stop city if there weren't so many geographical hindrances to that. You've got capes, you've got mountains. So when we start from the northern coast, um, the northernmost city on the coast is Astoria. It's also one of the largest cities, um, roughly about 10,200 in population. And that whole area of the northern coast goes from about Astoria, and you could take that all the way down to either Tillamook, Oceanside or Pacific City and I kind of break it down from Astoria to Pacific City or because that's kind of the last city in Tillamook County so you've got Clatsop County to the north and that's where Astoria is Astoria Warrington Seaside Cannon Beach um, and then you go further south than that you got Man Arch Cape and then uh, you've got Manzanita Bay City Garibaldi Tillamook and then you know you've got Natarts, Oceanside, Pacific City. Um, all of that region from Astoria to Pacific City is about 55,000 people in population. And then you go south of Pacific City, you've got the Central Oregon Coast. And really the big geographical separation there is the Three Capes. And you get to past the Three Capes, Pacific City and Cascade Head. Um, and you get south and there is Lincoln City. Uh, Lincoln City is about 10,000, and then it goes all the way down to, you could either, I would say the Central Oregon Coast kind of ends at Yahats. Some people say Florence, but the thing is between Yahats and Florence is Cape Perpetua, and that's kind of another separation point. And if you've driven the Oregon Coast, you'd kind of see this and know it. Um, there's large separators there. Um, you know, and within those regions, there's also separation points. You know, there's Cape Fowler between, you know, uh, Lincoln City, Depot Bay and Newport and Walport in those regions. But if we're just going to put them all together, there's about three population centers that are between 45 and 55,000. So there's that Astoria, Warrington, Seaside, Napa, Cannon Beach, Manzanita Bay City, all the way down to Tillamook Pacific City. That's roughly about 50, 55,000. And then you go Lincoln City down to, I'd say, Yahats, and that's roughly about 40,000 people. From Florence all the way down to, um, you know, Coos Bay, Bandon, um, or you could go all the way down to Gold Beach. So that is somewhere between. 40 and 50,000 people, how you separate it. So roughly there's around 150 to 170,000 people, depending on what communities you include from Astoria all the way down to Brookings. Um, the major cities along the way, um, in the Northern region, you've got Astoria, uh, that's about 10,000. Seaside's about 10,000. Um, then you go further south, you get to Tillamook. That's the county seat in Tillamook County. That's, they're about five to 6,000. Um, depending on what you look at online, about 5,200. And then you go further south of that, you've got Lincoln City, which is about 10,000. And then you've got Newport, which is about 10 to 11,000, somewhere in there. And then you go further south than that, you've got Florence, which is about 9,500 people. And then, you know, south of that, the next largest town, the big, the, the biggest city on the coast 
is Coos Bay, but Coos Bay and North Bend are two different cities, but they're really one. Um, and the, the Coos Bay region is about 16,000 and the North Bend area is about 10,000, but those two cities combined, you know, along with Coquille, Myrtle Point, um, if you want to add those in Bandon, I mean, you're looking at about 30,000 to 35,000 people. Port Orford, you know, it's about a thousand people. Gold Beach, about twenty five hundred people, and then Brookings, the southernmost um, city in Oregon. I mean, at the well, it's the biggest one in the southern coast, um, other than Coos Bay, is uh, sixty eight hundred. So you can kind of see, you know, depending on what type of a city you want to live in. Uh, I mean, I don't know where you're coming from, but uh, those are the the large city centers on the coast. So you've got Astoria, and it's r- roughly about ten to fifteen thousand is the big cities, right? So you've got you know Astoria, Tillamook, Newport, and then um, south of that you've got um, you've got your North Bend, Coos Bay, and Brookings. Now below that are the the cities that are you know somewhere between a thousand to five thousand people so you know just south of astoria is warrenton on the northern coast and that's about seven thousand people seaside's about seven thousand people and then the next largest town south of that is tillamook which is the county seat so it's like the biggest city there on in the the tillamook county but it's still kind of a smaller city if you're if you're comparing um south of that you know you've got like walport that's about 3500 and or excuse me walport's about uh 2300 and then toledo is about 3500 so toledo is just just east of newport it's about five or six miles east of newport but it ties into that whole population center um reed sports about 5000 um and then you've got you know coquille is about 4000 and bannon's about um through 3500 so those are like the middle of the road cities you know if you don't want to live in a bigger one like astoria newport coos bay you might live on those those other cities that are just outside of the big cities um and you can kind of see what those population centers are and then if you want a really small place you know anywhere let's say just right around a thousand there's a lot of little communities along the coast that are about a thousand people um and you've got you know napa that's about again it's like the toledo of astoria um it's about 10 miles east of astoria and that's about a thousand people cannon beach is about 1500 bay cities 1400 manzanita is about 600 garibaldi's 800 all these little these smaller um population centers pacific cities about 1200 lincoln city uh, like i said 10,000. depot bay i think is about 1500 um you know Celeste is about 1200 of the surrounding area there they say um seal rock is about 1100 people yahats is about a thousand people and that's like adding up everybody around the area it's there's no real city center there that's going to have that many people but that's rough to the southern coast you've got um you know lakeside that's about 1900 you've got myrtle points 2500 and port orford's like i said about 1100 people so you can kind of get an idea of what the different population centers are in and around um, the coast from the north to the south Um, you've got seven different counties on the coast you've got Clatsop County to the north and then going south you got Tillamook you got Lincoln you got Lane you got Douglas you've got Coos and you've got Curry Okay, so um, the major cities in each of those, Clatsop, you got like Astoria, Seaside, Warrington, uh, Tillamook, obviously Tillamook County, Tillamook, Oregon. Um, south of that, Lincoln County, you got Lincoln City and Newport, Walport, Yahats. And then you've got Lane County, which is Florence. And then south of that is Douglas County. That is basically just Reedsport. Um, I don't know. <laughs> they stretched that county all the way over just to, to grab Reedsport, but I think it's um the accessibility with the umqua river and then you've got to the south of that coos county so that's coos bay and surprisingly enough the i I believe the county seat of coos county is coquille which is about five or six miles inland from uh coos bay and then the southernmost county is curry county which is you know port orford uh i believe port orford's in there uh but i could i gotta check on that but definitely gold beach and brookings um so those are the counties along the oregon coast why is it important 
Well, depending on what you want to do with your property, whether you want to do, you know, you're just going to live there, you want to know the taxes, you want to know, because, and I'll get into taxes, but you want to know taxes, you want to know uh, vacation rental situation. There's a lot of different things that you're going to want to know when it comes to the coast in the different counties you might want to live in. So first of all, do you want to live on the coast? Well, yeah, I think I do want to live on the coast. Well, what are the specifics of that? Um, and then, you know, well, what, how big of a city do I want to live in? Where do I want to live? Um, what's the weather? And all these different questions you might ask, I'm going to try to answer some of them. And some of my other videos, you're going to have a lot more answers to those questions. But I definitely just want to touch base on those so you can kind of understand uh, what each region has for you as we go through them. And I'm not going to answer all your questions, but definitely leave a question in the comments and I'll try to touch base on that in further video. Um, and so here we go. So outside of population, one thing that I definitely want to address with you is the weather. Okay. There's a couple things I'm going to talk about. Um, there's a couple things I want to talk about. The first is annual precipitation, max temperature, the average annual max temperature, um, and also days of sun. You, you're deciding where to live. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to come into to your thought process. First of it is accessibility. If you just kind of want to get a second home on the coast and you want to be able to access it pretty easily, I would say that you're probably going to want to be on the north or central Oregon coast. And this is why when you live on the north Oregon coast, so somewhere between Astoria and say Pacific City, you're going to have pretty access, pretty easy accessibility from the airport. So if you're coming in from, say, Portland International Airport, or you maybe you fly into Salem, or you have a you, you can charter a smaller plane, um, no matter what you're doing, uh, it's going to be a lot more accessible um, from Portland to Seaside or Tillamook, or you can go down through uh, Lincoln City and hit the Central Oregon Coast as well. So those are the options when you're coming in through Portland International Airport. The other airport, the major airport that you're probably going to fly into is the Eugene Airport. And if you're flying in from the Eugene Airport, you know, that's more of the Central Coast. So it's about an hour and a half from Eugene to Newport, hour and a half, you know, about an hour and 15 to Florence, straight shot there. Or you can go, you know, south from, from Florence. It's probably, you know, 45 minutes to an hour drive south from Florence to Coos Bay. So those are the options. If you're looking to go to the Southern Oregon coast, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because if you're flying into say Medford, the drive from Medford over to say Brookings is about two and a half to three hour drive. So it's a lot longer than if you're going say from Florence or excuse me, from Portland to Astoria, which is about, you know, maybe an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so you can expect, you know, the shortest is going to be maybe an hour if you're going Eugene to Florence, um, to maybe two hours, two and a half hours. That's the longest route that's going to be to get to the Oregon coast. If you're flying into an airport, um, if you're just driving, say you're driving from, from, uh, anywhere in the Valley. So the Valley, the Willamette Valley is from Portland down to Cottage Grove. Um, and you can check that out on the map. But it's going to be about an hour drive anywhere from the westernmost part of the valley over to the coast. So whether you're coming from McMinnville and you're driving over or Grand, you know, McMinnville area to Lincoln City, about an hour. If you're going to go from Portland to Seaside or Tillamook, about an hour. If you're going to go from Corvallis to Newport, about an hour. If you're going to go from Eugene to Florence, about an hour. So it's always about an hour if you if you just want to know how long it's going to be. What's the best road to take? Well, either from Portland to see uh, Astoria, that's a drive that um, is pretty it's a pretty nice drive and then I would say the next best one is definitely Corvallis to Newport that's a that's a clean one um, the, the other ones I just I mean they're not they're drives I enjoy but they're not drives that I would say this is the best drive that you're gonna want to take you know safety wise and and just speed wise uh, a lot of single lane a lot of curves a lot of turns um, a lot of uh, that kind of stuff 
So when it comes to accessibility, those are the different options in accessibility. When it comes to weather, do you want more sun or less sun? If you don't care, if you don't know anything about the Oregon coast, um, you're gonna get a lot of rain. You're gonna get a lot of gray days. You're gonna get a lot of overcast days. You're gonna get days where it is 80 to 90 degrees in the valley. And then that if you're living right on the coast, you're gonna get a lot of that uh, marine layer coming over. And you know, for the from the beach to about two miles inland, you're gonna get a marine layer along the whole Oregon coast because that heat just pulls that marine layer in and that's just what you're gonna have to deal with. Uh, in the summer, it might be sunny, but it's definitely gonna be windy. So pack your windbreaker, pack your hoodie. Um, in the winter, you can just expect it to be rainy. So get used to it. Um, you're probably not gonna be able to use an umbrella because it's too windy. Um, you're just gonna have to get, you know, your Eddie Power coat or whatever you're gonna wear and go from there. So when we're on the coast, um, if you wanna live on the Northern coast, so Astoria, uh warrenton seaside those regions you're getting about 120 days of sun a year in the newport area the central oregon coast you're getting about 160 days of sun a year and on the southern oregon coast you get about so um they call it the banana belt you know anywhere from i'd say brookings to gold beach to port orford and you can kind of see the geographical reasoning for this in coos bay you're getting about 190 days of sun a year so if you want more sun go to the Southern Oregon coast. If you want somewhere in the middle, go to the central. And if you want uh, a little bit less vitamin D, maybe live in Astoria or Seaside. All beautiful areas, all wonderful panoramic sunsets. Um, but you're just gonna get more of those sunsets on the so Southern Oregon coast to the Central Oregon coast. Uh, where am I located? I didn't mention this, I have in other videos, but I'm located in the Central Oregon coast. So Newport, Walport, Yahats area. Those are the, that's where I'm from, but I know the whole Oregon coast very, very well. I've lived here my whole life. So these are the regions that you're going to, I would say, you know, central to southern are the best weather spots for sure. And southern is definitely going to get more sun um, statistically uh, for sure. When it comes to temperature, it doesn't vary very, it, it doesn't vary very much. It's, you know, but it's always going to be at the coldest somewhere between 42 to 46 at the hottest it's going to be you know 58 to 62 and you know you might have your hot days where it's 70 80 degrees no wind and those are the days that you know people randomly are on the coast and they're like i want to live here and they don't realize that most of the rest of the, of the year is not like that now if you haven't lived on the coast and you want to know a little bit about what happens um, with traffic, with tourism. Um, so basically from about Labor Day through March, tourism slows down quite a bit. It might pick up at times. You know, maybe there's some people that come over for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, different three day weekends. But overall, it's nothing like the summer. Once the summer hit late April um, or early May, all the way through, like I said, Labor Day, in September, it's going to be absolutely crazy. And you know, the peak month is obviously July, but you're gonna get so much traffic. You're gonna get inundated with it. You're gonna be slowed down everywhere you wanna go because there's so much traffic on the road. So you've gotta have two things. You've gotta have patience and you gotta have a plan. Those two Ps are very important. First of all, it's gonna take longer than you think. Everything's gonna take longer than you think. So you better be prepared. Number two, have a plan. Where are you going? What's the route? I've said this before. Have the back roads of whatever city you live in. If there are any back roads, you better know them like the back of your hand. Everything. So you want to go eat somewhere? There's going to be more people there. You want to go shopping? There's going to be more people there. So you've got to plan and you've got to have patience. Those two things when it comes to tourism and traffic. When you're going to buy a house, where do you want to live? Do you want to live every city along the coast has a different personality? has little it's got different pros and cons you're going to want to know and narrow down where you want to live what type of a community you want to live in um, what type of uh, events you want to have in your community and then from there what kind of a house do you want to live in each different place on the coast has a different market um, and you're definitely going to want to kind of narrow down where you want to live i i have clients that call me and they say hey i want to live want to have this and that i don't really care um i just want to live on the oregon coast and it's that's fine but it's always good to just come visit up and down the coast and kind of understand where you want to live so that 
and what kind of characteristics you want, where you want to live so that we can narrow that down. One thing you want to know is each county has different taxes. So in Oregon, there are no sales tax, but there is an income tax. And in some cities, there's like a food tax. They're kind of trying to tax tourists, right? So there's a room tax, there's a food tax. In some cities, there's a gas tax. So all those things you want to kind of factor in, they're going to get you somehow. Um, property taxes, they vary. So for instance, in Lincoln County, which is the Central Oregon coast, if you live just in the county, the taxes are lower than if you live in a city. The cities will always be more. They're going to get you for their system development charges. You know, they've got roads and they've got sewer systems and they've got water systems that they have to have upkeep on and they're going to tax you on that they're going to tax you on your view they're going to tax you on just different locations so make sure that you know what the taxes are because you might buy you know uh, a five hundred thousand dollar house in the in a more rural area in the county and the taxes might be say you know forty five hundred dollars a year and you're like oh that's not bad and then you might go to a city and they're gonna the same house smaller lot uh, more condensed space and you're gonna be taxed 7500 on that place or 10500 on that place because the taxes are so much more and you have a bay view or an ocean view and they're gonna tax you on that so you just want to know what that is now the way that taxes work in Oregon is that you when, whenever the house was first established and first built that was the beginning of the tax structure and from there they can only uh, increase your taxes by three percent maximum per year that is the rule so in some states in some places let's say you have a house that was at one point worth two hundred thousand dollars and then the value shot up and somebody bought the house for five hundred thousand dollars well the taxes go up in proportion to how much the property was bought for so that is something that you don't have to worry about in oregon but you do have to worry about um, just what that initial tax number is so definitely check on the houses that you're looking at and factor that into your budget when it comes to the housing there um, one thing you're going to want to know is like why are you moving to the coast if you're a retiree it doesn't matter as much but when it comes to you're moving here because of a job or you're going to come try to find a job um, you know obviously the state county city government jobs are going to be some of the major employers on the coast so each county you know there's a lot of different jobs there um, and then obviously all the service jobs that coincide with that. Um, some of the manufacturing jobs, you know, there's some mills along the coast, obviously sea uh, fishing, the fishing industry is huge for seafood um, and everything that goes along with that. Those are the major, um, I would say, quote unquote, manufacturing, um, but there's not a lot of employers outside of that. So each county has their own major employers. So, you know, the northern Oregon coast, what comes to mind is the fishing industry in Astoria and Warrington, especially, and all the little things that go on with that. Um, and this just below that, you know, you've got Tillamook, which has the Tillamook Cheese Factory. You've got Newport, which is a county seat. So it's got all the county jobs. It's got state jobs. It's got NOAA. It's got, you know, the fishing industry. It's got the mill in Toledo. So there's a lot of different things that go on on the central Oregon coast on the southern Oregon coast it's the same thing so you're just going to want to go along the different cities on the coast and figure out what is it that you're looking for um, for your house for the population for uh, the taxes for the weather um, there's just a lot of things so we're going to do a lot of different videos. Make sure to check the channel, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications so that you know. Uh, we're going to do comparison videos, pros and cons videos. We'll do vlog tours um, and check the channel. See what, what you like. We're, we're just going to keep growing here. So let us know what it is we can help you with. We're more than happy to help. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Love to get in contact with you and help you in your property search. Um, so... What does 2024 have in store for us? There's a video coming for that soon. So until then, I want you to just have a great day and keep getting after it.